my hair is gigantic. When I do my hair, I use it goes big first, and then it just kind of like goes normal. We haven't gotten to the normal range yet because it's early, but woo! Look like Johnny Bravo. Let's do this anyway. Here we go. Oh, my battery's gonna die. There it is. Ow. And then we're back. All right, that was a quick fix. Drinking this delicious, not so delicious smoothie right now. I drink a lot of, I do a lot of stuff that's disgusting so that I can live a healthy life and make my wife happy. I don't know why I'm talking about this all of a sudden, but that looks like I drink one of these smoothies every morning that has uh, like frozen fruit in it and a banana and hemp seed. I'm not even sure what hemp seeds are and a tiny bit of honey and coconut oil and then a whole variation of other stuff. There's this powdered green stuff that goes in it that smells like vegetables, I suppose. Then I drink my favorite apple cider vinegar every morning. Oh yeah, happiness in a glass. Then this summer we start brushing our teeth with this toothpaste that's made out of like clay with salt and mint in it. It is wretched, but I'll tell you what, my teeth feel so clean. They're like the cleanest ever. It's like you want to smile, but frown at the same time. My wife loves me. She's always looking out for my health and I try and just do like whatever she tells me to do because if I get to make decisions, I will make a less informed decision or it won't be as, as healthy of a decision. But my wife makes very healthy decisions for me and I just go with it. I think she likes me. She wants me to live a long time. All right, let's jump into it. On Sunday, we went to the Art Museum in Philadelphia. It is awesome there. If you've ever seen Rocky, you know this. That's the place that we went to. And so we went inside, my kids have never been there before. And on Sundays they have pay what you want. My kids are already free because they're under 12 and then I paid whatever I wanted to. And we went in and checked it out. Whenever I take people to the art museum, even students, I will go to the things I know they're going to like. Wait, do you only have this many houses in the village? What? The water fountain. That's how they got water? Yeah. Like from, from the decks, how they like and it's like fast and furious. We don't spend a ton of time because I, what I'd like to do is leave before they're bored so that they want to go back again the next time. Everywhere we go. I said you always have to touch the water. Is that true? So that was awesome last Sunday. Then on Monday, went up to my classroom, started surveying things, measuring stuff, getting ready for some new builds that I'm gonna put in my room. I have this new organization system thing I wanna have behind my desk that's going to kind of mimic some other artists that I like. There's a guy named Tom Sachs that I really like. There's an artist and a children's book creator, Oliver Jeffers, that I really like. Uh, and another artist named Mac Primo, who I'm actually going to meet up with. He agreed to have my students up to his workspace in October. So we're going to go up to Brooklyn and check him out. And I really like their... I got smoothie on me. I'm going to make something reminiscent of that behind my desk and have all these different containers in it and, and labels on it so that everything's labeled, but it kind of looks fun and not just like, uh, not just something I could buy in a store. Like I said before, I like making my own stuff. After that, we went back to Jinxed, which is another secondhand store in Philadelphia in West Philly this time. Check that out. Didn't really find anything. Sometimes secondhand stores try and sell you crap that's like super expensive, but it's like, that's a drawer that you trash picked I and mean, it's $20. And I get it, like if you got it from 300 miles away and I can't really find it here, but I could. So that's what I'm deciding to do anyway. So I'm gonna go trash picking this week and see if I can find some cool stuff to put in my room. Then Monday night, my dear friend, Miss Yonkers came over again and we actually started working on our donors choose. We, it's, it's live, it just went up the other day. I haven't talked about it yet. But what we're trying to do is introduce flexible seating into our classroom. Given the nature of our class this year and some of the students that are gonna be in there, we have kids that have needs that might look like standing desks will work better than sitting in desks or beanbag chairs might work better than sitting in a regular desk or on the floor for independent reading time. So we're trying to meet those needs and introduce it in slowly 
So we started a donor's choose. I'm gonna put the link to that below. If you're interested, look, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. When I think of other people giving to me, like I'll take five bucks, I'll take a dollar. You got 50 cents in your pocket? You wanna go clean out the cushions of your couch and then drop that all into the account? I would take it. I just think, one, I think this platform is very interesting because if you give anything or if you know anyone that has anything to give, they could give that money and then you're going to see it take place in my class. You'll see those students. You'll see the gear in there. You'll see how we set it up. So I think this is kind of going to be fun on YouTube just because you get to see like the whole thing. You don't just donate money and it goes somewhere and it disappears and you don't really ever see how that played out. But I'm going to show you exactly how it's going to play out. So that's up now. If you have money and you can donate, great. And even if you don't have money, if you could tell other folks about it, then that I would appreciate that as well uh, because I don't have money, but I know dudes that have money and that's just as good sometimes. It's kind of like not having my own pool, but I know a guy with a pool and that suits me just fine. Tuesday, I went to Ikea with the whole family and Tuesday at Ikea, magical. You know why? Because it's kids eat free days. <laughs> So my kids go and they eat a whole bunch of Ikea food for free and it's awesome. One of my favorite things about Ikea is across from the Ikea in Philadelphia, there is this giant ship called the USS United States and it's awesome. I am like totally, kind, I, won't, I don't wanna say obsessed, but I'm really into this ship. It's beautiful. It used to be the fastest ship in the world. It's larger than the Titanic was. And they brought it to Philly to be a casino. And then when they didn't get the licensing, the story of that I'm told is now it's just sitting there and they're not really sure what to do with it. But it is like this amazing place. I would love to go on it. I asked my wife if we could sneak on there for my 41st birthday, but that's illegal. So I'm trying to go a legal route. Yeah, I'd love to be on that ship. It's amazing. So we went to Ikea and we just did a ton of shopping and looking around, trying to get ideas for the classroom, see what we could implement into the classroom. Wanna get some coffee, Daddy? Splendid, go ahead. Give me some love, cheerio. Now that's how you make good coffee. Exactly. Is it hot? Cheers. Thanks, my hot. Swedish friends. I love your furniture and your cheap, low bargain basement prices. Are you drinking coffee? Is it good? Oh my god. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> Marley's first try of coffee. I, I've, in our new kitchen. I've tried coffee and it tastes disgusting. It does. Mm. It's a good temperature now. Oh my god. This is it delicious? That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, welcome everyone, Teacher Talk Live. Hello. Ikea edition. This is Brody. Hello, I am Brody. Um, what are we getting here at Ikea today? Uh, some robot arms. Do you know what Ikea means in Swedish? No. It means chocolate horse. Seriously? Yeah. You're lying. I'm not lying. I don't... Bro, you're my son. You're my All flesh right. and blood. Yes, leave a like down below if you're and say yes, CJ's telling the truth, or no, CJ's not telling If he is, tell him, tell us in the comments below. Sometimes I like to do weird stuff to my kids like this. Ew! You <laughs> go. All right, let's go shop. I don't know why every time we go to stores, they gotta get in the beds. I mean, I hope Ikea doesn't have a bed bug issue. What if there's bed bugs in there? That would be fireproof. Marley's like tucked in and stuff. And she's part robot now. I am, I am at robot, robot at robot. So I bought a bunch of these boxes. Well, these gigs right here. So in my shelf thing that I'm gonna build, I'll put all these boxes in there. I bought these guys too. Just cause I like the fact that they kind of looked old and like they were, uh, I don't know, like you'd find them at a Navy yard or something like that. And Yonkers loves polka dots. So I got polka dots on there too. We got a whole bunch of those and I'm gonna put those once I build the shelves, they'll all fit in there and they'll all be labeled and they'll be cool and kind of look like, just look awesome. That's what I'm going for. Then on Tuesday, I also met up with a friend who has an Instagram account called Beers With Me. Yep, that's it. He works for a beer distributor in Philadelphia where he su supports local breweries. And what he's trying to do is create a conversation around beer. Talk about 
who's drinking beer and what kind of beer do they drink and what do their lives look like. He asked me to come on and talk about teachers and alcohol, which is an interesting topic. I've never had to talk about that before. And I met him at the Bottle Bar East in the Fishtown section of Philadelphia. So I went back up to Fishtown that day. We sat down for about 30 minutes. We did this really great interview. I recorded the whole thing and then my SD card got corrupted and I've never had that happen before. If anyone's watching this and you know what to do with the corrupted SD card, can I reformat it? Can I use it again? Can I save any of the stuff that's on there? I'm not sure how and the internet doesn't seem to be a big help. It's just like, it's one of those things you search and like ads keep coming up for things and I don't want to have to pay for it if I can get away from it. All my footage is lost from that. It was really great. I really enjoyed sitting down with him and as soon as that podcast is up, I'll let everyone know about it so you can kind of check it out. Where I talk about drinking, which is kind of, it's kind of weird. I don't know. I didn't drink until I was 35 years old. I have a family that is plagued with alcoholism and drug abuse. And so I've tried to live a really, really healthy lifestyle ever since I was 18 years old. And so drinking didn't play a part of that. I grew up as part of like the punk rock straight edge movement and didn't drink through all of that. But then when I was 35, I realized like I'm a bit more processed than a lot of people in my family. And I think that I can do this responsibly. And so I have been for the last five years. And it's been something that I look at as a way to like enhance the things that I'm eating. I felt like it was a good space to tell that story about myself in terms of like how I'm very even deliberate in that act in my life. Like it's not something like I just do whenever or where I let like run my life in any way, but I'm very deliberate about it. I feel like it was a good choice because I was able to like take the fear away from that and not be afraid of something anymore and instead like take ownership over it in a very deliberate way. Then Tuesday night, we had my friend Colby Sharp on, on Teacher Talk Live and it was really, really fun. Colby Sharp is someone that I've watched online for a while and I've never gotten to talk to him one-to-one. -one. We've like text back and forth and stuff like that before, but he's a really, really interesting guy for a number of reasons. One, he is 100% no nonsense, right? So when he's talking about stuff, it's he's either like all for it or completely against it. And he's not afraid to tell you that he is. And I really love that. We got to talk about real strategies to help kids with their reading, kids that are reluctant readers we got to talk about. And this guy lives in the same small town that he grew up in teaches at the same school that he went to as a child. I just love that. I love that idea of like ownership over your neighborhood where you go somewhere, you decide to stay and you're gonna be there for a while to like do some good and or, or create some change in your neighborhood and be the teacher that the kids in that neighborhood need. I love that idea. We had a, we had a great talk. So you can find that linked up here somewhere. I'll put one of those little card situations. You can click it and then that pulls down to a menu and you can say that you wanna watch it later and all that stuff. So Wednesday, went to the beach again because that's what we do when you live in New Jersey, you go to the shore. So we went down with Miss Yonkers, came with us this time, and we spent the day just like digging a gigantic hole in the sand. We came down the beach today, Ocean City, and the kids wanted to build a hole. Which the kids said they were gonna help with, which the kids didn't really help with that much. Then we went down to the tidal pools and stuff, and when we came back from the tide pools, our hole had been filled in by the ocean. Because, you know, that's what happens when you stay at the beach for the entire day, which is what we do all the time. You're doing it. Then we went out for the best pizza in the world. It used to be called Mac and Mancos, now it's called Manco and Mancos. I still call it Mac and Mancos, because you're not gonna change the name on me. 35 years in, nope, not happening. It's just best pizza. I don't know if it's the water. I don't know if it's a little bit of sand gets in there, but man, it's like they sprinkle magic on that thing. I think it's made with unicorn tears. Thursday, we went to the Morris Arboretum, which is owned by University of Pennsylvania. They have this place up in just outside of the city. Beautiful. We got there one hour before they closed. I didn't know that they were going to close that early. So we just ran around. We had our nieces with us. We had to take two cars. It took a very long time. It actually took as long to get there as we had to stay in the place. But it's a great spot to be able to just like let the kids go wild and nothing's off limits. You can touch anything that you want. You can play anywhere that you want. You can walk in the water. You can touch the flowers and see what they smell like. You can climb some of the trees and stuff. Some of them you can't because they're super old, but it's, it's a great spot in Philadelphia, Morris Arboretum.
So our neighborhood has free passes to a lot of like local museums and attractions. And if you just go to the library and ask for passes, they give them to you for free. And it's great. I mean, I, I think most people in my neighborhood don't even know that they exist. So we're at this place called the Mars Arboretum, which is owned by the University of Pennsylvania. It's like a really beautiful gardening place that they would be, that would be really expensive anywhere else in Pennsylvania, but for free, we get to come. They have all of these great attractions and it's meticulously maintained. And there's like no one here. We're just walking around. There's a big swan behind me. I think you heard me. Probably gonna ask for my autograph. All right, let me go find my children because I don't know where they went now. Gardening is one of those things I love so much. Ever since I was in sixth grade, I've loved gardening. My parents made me edge my front lawn and just something from then on, I just loved getting like dirt under my fingernails. My kids aren't there yet and they just don't, can't appreciate it as much, but we're in this garden and it has some of my favorite flowers like Cosmos, Mexican sunflowers, maybe my favorite flower of all time, yarrow, mint. There's all kinds of fun stuff in here and someone's getting yelled at to go this way. But I just hope that when they grow up, they can appreciate it. And if not, I hope they always remember that they had a beautiful backyard with a cottage garden in it even if it was only about the size of a prison cell. Then this week, Marley was learning how to ride a bicycle and I got a special package in the mail from Australia. I'm a little sweaty. We were outside riding bicycles and it's about 98,000 degrees outside. Uh, but then I saw the mailman trying to put something in the mailbox. He couldn't quite fit it in there. And then Brody starts yelling that I need to go over and get the mail. We got a package from Australia. There's only one person I know in Australia. Well, that's not true. I know a few people in Australia, but there's only one person I know that would send me a package. I don't know. Let's get to it. Offspring, we got a package in the mail. What? All right, let's see what it is. From Kafupal Industries. Oh my goodness. What is that thing? Oh my God. One koala bear. Oh, good. I like the koala bear. What are you excited about? The chocolate. It's so adorable. Thanks for bringing this. I love the koala bear. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Mama. You're the best. Best of the best. Better than my dad. What? <sighs> Here we go, Mike. Delicious, and I'm not taking a piss either. Hey. Hey, that means something different in Australia. It means I'm not joking around. Thanks a lot, Kafupo. This is delicious. This is delicious. Great surprise that we got today. Crunchy. We have to save some for mom too. Yeah. Look at my cool new makeup shirt. I'm a dragon. You're a dragon? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that Cat. mom is the mother of dragons? No. Thanks, Thanks Emma. Emma. And that was really exciting, man. I just think if you've not checked out Kafupa Land on YouTube, she is, Emma is just such a wonderful lady. And the more I get to know her, the more I like her because she's, at, she's really, really funny. And I think she's doing YouTube for all the right reasons, right? Like she's trying to help new teachers out. She's trying to, to bring people together to help the students and to help new teachers out. And that to me is like the number one thing. That's why I do this. And it's just funny to see how that's playing itself out in a whole other country in a different part of the world. I did an interview with her a few weeks ago and as a thank you, she sent me all this stuff. And I'll say those cookies were, were good. We like them. They're gone now. And my daughter stole my koala bear thing that Emma gave me. I'm a 40 year old man. I guess I don't really need a stuffed koala bear, I guess. All right, in the weeks coming up, we're edging closer and closer to the beginning of the school year, which means I'm maximizing as much time as I can. We're gonna be down the shore overnight this week. We have friends that have a house that are gonna allow us to stay there. Awesome. Teacher Talk Live with Smarty Style this week, and that's gonna be really fun. We're gonna be talking about something along the lines of like race and in the classroom, which I feel like is a timely topic right now. I'm gonna be doing some build videos to talk about like, how I build those flying books in my room and how I make my bookshelves in my room so that if people want to replicate that, they can. It's gonna be a cool week. Ah, uh, there's my buddy. I was telling everyone that you were learning to ride a bicycle this week. Uh-huh. Was it fun? Was there anything else that stood out this week that you really enjoyed? Something that's going to happen. What's that? Oh, this week? What's yeah. happening this week? We're going over to Brendan and Audrey's um, beach house and we're going to sleep over there and go to that beach. I don't know what you just said. It sounded like Spanish, but. Have a good week. Guys, thanks again. Check out the Donors Choose page if you have a second and tell your rich friends. Rich friends? Why yeah. would you want to tell rich friends? So I can get my new seating from my classroom. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace out. Peace. Cheers.